Hello friends, welcome back to Pharmascope. I'm your host Kausto Power, and in this part three of Biosimilar versus Generic series, we are going to learn about evaluation tests for biosimilars, especially the monoclonal antibody products and generic medicine drug products, which are used in pharmaceutical industries. This session is going to be very interesting and knowledgeful. So let's begin. So as you can see on this slide, uh, we'll go with uh, the first and the foremost uh, evaluation test which is performed in biosimilar is the protein concentration. So as we know, biosimilars are made up of proteins. So the first and foremost and the prime most uh, evaluation test that to be performed is protein concentration. So the most frequently used instrument is solo VP. And in that instrument, it's based upon the principle of B.R. Lambert's law. It's basically UV spectroscopy. So in that, what we do, so we perform the analysis at 280 nanometer, and there is an extinction coefficient specific to specific monoclonal antibody. And using that, we find out the how much is the protein concentration in that sample or in that drug product. So that is the first uh, evaluation test which we go with the biosimilar drug product similarly on the other hand generic medicine the prime most or the most important uh, we can say the evaluation test is the assay so first we do the identification of api because we have we have to be sure that the same api is present in the drug product so we go with the identification then we perform the assay of api so usually the assay limit is 95 to 105 percent of the label claim so for example, if the label claim is 100 mg, then 95 mg to 105 mg should be present in a drug product. So that gives us the assurity that the actual, uh, the uh, appropriate amount of drug is present in our drug product. Then the most, uh, the another important uh, test is the uniformity of dosage units. So that can be performed by content uniformity as well as by the weight variation test. We will go with the content uniformity because that is usually or most widely used for UOD, that is uniformity of dosage units. It's important because uh, I will just give an example. So if we are making a tablet of a fixed dose combination, if we have a three APIs, uh, one API has a 75% of the 75% uh, drug content, second API comprises of, uh, we'll say 10% and the third for 5% and the rest is the excipient. So now in this case, when we will do granulation, dry mixing that 5% API, should be uniformly distributed throughout the uh, blend and it should be uniformly present in that finished tablet also. And to check that whether all the three drug contents are present in the same appropriate uh, percentage, we do uni uh, content uniformity. Similarly, uh, when we perform any, we are, we are making an emulsion or suspension, that time also content uniformity plays a major role because at different location of that suspension or emulsion, the drug should be uniformly present. So usually go with the HPLC method and its principle, we all know it's a chromatographic principle. If you don't know, you can just Google it and read about the chromatography in detail. Then the next important method is, uh, or the next important evaluation test is the degradation products. So now uh, here it's a slight uh, variation from the generic medicines. So in biosimilar, there are two major degradation pathways or degradation product. First is the size and the second is the charge. So uh, we will first see the size impurities. So for that, we use two instruments. One is SEC, another is CSDS. In SEC, it's a full form is size exclusion chromatography and CSDS is called as capillary electrophoresis, sodium dodecyl sulfate. So CSDS is a, a upper version or a sophisticated version of the gel electrophoresis. So in this, in biosimilars, SCC, we perform to measure the person HMWP, that is high molecular weight proteins. So those are the aggregates. Then we perform, we measure the percent monomer, that is the main peak of that antibody, and also percent LMWP, that is lower molecular weights that are called as fragments. So our main focus for SEC will be the HMWP for measuring the aggregates and percent monomer. For fragments, we go to CSDS. A CSDS is more sophisticated instrument. More uh, it has more accuracy and precision to determine the fragments. We rely on CSDS for fragments. 
So in CSDS, there are two techniques, non-reduced and reduced. In non-reduced, we that is majorly used for checking the percent purity or the purity of our drug product because in that we analyze the total fragments as well as the percent monomer that is the antibody which is present. And in reduced, we majorly focus on percent LC plus HC that is light chain plus heavy chain and person energy that is non-glycosylated heavy chain so we focus on this uh, two parameters in reduce there are uh, uh, there are multiple parameters which we check in reduce as well as non-reduced but these four are the focused ones so whereas in generic medicines the degradation products are analyzed through hplc so we determine the percent impurity total impurity as well as the percent unknown impurities so in ICHQ3B guideline of uh, impurities, you will get in detail uh, how we analyze, what all impurities we have to analyze, then how the threshold is measured, that is the limit is decided. So basically the limit is decided upon the daily dose intake. Uh, so how much total impurity should be present, how much percent unknown impurity should be present. Usually the known impurities has a higher uh, limit than the percent unknown. So usually when, uh, the development is going on if we are getting some unknown peaks and it's crossing the limit then we make it a known so we analyze it and then we can give a higher limit for those impurities so this was the first impurity in biosimilar that is the size impurity then the second impurity is the uh, the second degradation pathway is the charge so in charge impurity we use instrument called as ICIEF or IEX. So uh, I, ICIEF is also called as ICE. So it's basically imaged capillary isoelectric focusing technique. And IEX is we all know ion exchange chromatography. So what happens in ICE is that uh, based upon that, first of all, every protein has an isoelectric point. So as monoclonal antibodies are also protein, they will have an isoelectric point. So it eludes at a specific isoelectric point. So on uh, first, it eludes a person uh, acidic contents, then there is a monomer, and then there are the basic uh, components of that antibody. So in ICE, we analyze the percent acidic, uh, that is the acidic moiety is present in the antibodies, then the basic moieties and the main peak. So that is done in the ICE. Uh, the instrument uh, which we frequently use is the Morris, and the technique is called as ICE, IC, uh, ICIEF. So we determine the percent acidic, percent basic, percent main, and the isoelectric point. So these four parameters are analyzed in the uh, Morris. Whereas on the other hand, in generic medicine, there are various other impurities uh, than the degradation products. So like residual solvents. So in case of uh, making a tablet by non-aqueous granulation, we use IPA acetone. At that time, we have to measure that how much IP or how much acetone is present after the formulation. So that is the residual solvents present. So we usually go with the GC, that is the gas chromatography. Details you will get in the ICHQ3C guideline. Then there are elemental impurities which we have to analyze in our drug product. So the, the details are given in ICHQ3D R1 guidelines. And now, nowadays, like the most buzzing uh, impurity, which is talked in the pharmaceutical industry is that of nitrosamine impurities. Because after the Sartans case, uh, well, Sartans and all the Sartans, uh, the US FDA found out the nitrosamine impurities to be increasing over the period of time. So what happens in nitrosamine impurities if there is a amine present in our drug product or the drug or the excipients, and if there is a nitrosating agents present in the same, at an elevated temperature and at an acidic condition, the nitrosamines are formed and those nitrosamines are basically toxic, uh, toxic in the nature. So uh, currently US FDA has uh, given a guideline on the nitrosamine impurities also. So you can check that on the US FDA site. Moving ahead. So the fourth most important point in biosimilar is the potency. That is we perform through the bioassays because we have to know what is the percent potency or with whether our product behaves similarly as that of RLD. 
so in bioassay we can broadly classify into three categories functional assays so in functional assays we measure bio biological activities that is mechanism of action so for that there are different assays sub assays we can say like adcc cdc then there are inhibition assays also so all these uh, depending upon our antibody depending upon its mechanism of action we choose a specific type of assay in functional assays then there are binding assays like uh, as we have an antibody it should bind to the receptor so that binding assays is performed so pd1 pdl1 p40 these are different types of uh, receptors to which our uh, protein uh, binds and we perform its efficacy then there are affinity affinity assays also same principle how much uh, percent affinity is uh with our bisimilar monoclonal antibody to bind to the specific receptor so that all data is basically represented in the relative potency term so relative potency is basically the efficiency coefficient ec50 of the uh, of the rld which is compared with the ec50 of the test and that ratio should be close to 1 so usually in uh, usually 0.95 to 1.05 is the most stringent one which we go ahead to choose whether our uh, bisimilar is behaving same as that of the mono, uh, rld so that is dependent upon the relative potency whereas in generic medicines the most crucial and most frequently used evaluation test is the in vitro dissolution for oral solids basically so in that we use various dissolution apparatus depending upon which drug product uh, we are using then uh, to analyze we use, H, uh, we use hplc so in that we determine the percent drug release or the percent drug dissolved over a period of a time in a suitable medium so that is the in vitro dissolution moving ahead so as biosimilars are the parental products uh, the importance uh, there is importance for the sterility so we go with the sterility testing as well as bacterial endotoxin uh, test so in all in generic medicines also if uh, we are uh, developing a parental product we have to perform sterility test bacterial endotoxin test and as well as antimicrobial effectiveness test a uh, because uh, in parentals most of the, uh, mostly we use antimicrobials so that effectiveness has to be measured these are few general tests which we perform in biosimilars upon, up, apart from the specific degradation assay tests so in biosimilars appearance color particulate matter clarity subvisible particles mfi ph ph plays a very crucial role in biosimilars because uh, if there is a slight variation or a major variation in the ph it may cause degradation of the drug uh, of the antibodies or of the protein and that's why it's important to maintain that ph uh, range which is predefined osmolality also as their parentals we have studied the isotonic uh, principle so osm usually 2a to 220 milli osmol is the range which we go for so as a drug drug product or as a parenteral it is going to be injected directly into the blood stream so it should have similar isotonicity if it's a hypotonic or hypotonic it may cause the complications so it's important to measure the osmolality then extractable volume how much volume uh, we can extract or we get out of the uh, finished product that is measured in extractable volume there is a glide force for the uh, injectable uh, prefilled syringes also then for generic medicine same appearance color particulate matter clarity sub visible particles and ph osmolality for the parental products extractable volume for ophthalmic droplet is crucial because uh, we have to get the similar droplet because droplet will uh, again affect how much drug is being administered so that is important to analyze the how much is the droplet then water loss usually in ophthalmics if there is a water loss uh, there it will affect the assay also and then the efficacy for tablets uh, i uh, that is the in process that size shape dt friability hardness are uh, measured then these are the few excipients measurement tests which perform in biosimilars so in biosimilars there are basically uh, four to five or three to four uh, excipients which we use surfactants for stabilization buffers sugar 
and if required then the preservative or antimicrobial but mostly surfactant buffer and sugar are present in a biosimilar monoclonal antibody formulation so it's essential to measure whether there is a degradation in the psat polysorbate over the period of time because if there is a degradation it will going to affect the uh, monoclonal antibody stability also so we measure uh, usually by hplc or by different techniques we measure the concentration similarly in generic medicines uh, if we are making a parenteral product if there is a preservative used or a, a liquid so a suspension solution is used is prepared and if it contains a preservative then we have to measure the preservative concentration also so like bkc or methyl paraben propyl paraben because if over the stability the preservative concentration decreases below a certain period of time then it may cause the degradation of our drug product now the most interesting part of this uh, evaluation test session is the stability testing so here it becomes very interesting in biosimilars as they are the proteins monoclonal antibodies so the real time testing is done at 5c 5c plus or minus 3c that is the cold uh, room uh, cold room temperature so at 5c real time is done for accelerated conditions we go for the 25c uh, at 60% rh and for stress condition we go for the 40c and the 75% rh whereas in generic medicines the real time is done at 25c uh, at 60% rh or 30c uh, 65% rh depending upon at which zone uh, for which zone of the world we are doing the formulation so there are various zone, zones uh, described by the ICH guideline you can just go on the ICH and type the stability zones you will get the different stability uh, temperatures and the rh for specific zones as well as for 5c uh, if it is specified for accelerated condition we go with the 40 uh, 40c with the 75% rh and in india uh, the real time uh, is done at the 30c and 75% rh uh, this becomes crucial when we apply for the dcgi license they usually uh, they usually ask for the real time for india that is 30 75% stability so that's why it's important to know this uh, time point know this stability condition whereas in biosimilars as the uh, the upper real time accelerated stress condition uh, were tested for the drug product we have a drug substance also so usually what happens uh, in biosimilar industry drug substance uh, is prepared in a bulk then it is stored and as the uh, Uh, demand for the drug product comes in the market it that ds is converted into drug product and then supplied to the market so that's why it's become essential to measure the uh, stability of the drug substance also so in drug substance uh, depending upon the product depending upon the characteristic of the monoclonal antibody and the formulation either we freeze it so at minus 40 we check the stability or if it is not stable at minus 40 we go for the 5c that is the cold room temperature so this is for the drug substance moving ahead so the last point of the evaluation test is the clinical efficacy because uh, if we don't perform the clinical efficacy we are not sure whether our test generic or biosimilar will behave same as that of rld or innovator so for clinical efficacy in biosimilars we go we go with the pkpd measurement immunogenicity and clinical studies whereas for generic medicines the uh, fundamental is the bioequivalence testing so we go with the pk fasting fed cmax auc unless and until a different uh, testing is mentioned by the us fda for the specific product so this was all about the various evaluation tests which we perform for biosimilars and generic medicines in pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry i hope you have learned and if you have learned then do subscribe share and comment uh, for this session so stay tuned goodbye